Danielle, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So um, tell us a little bit about the employment situation at Deering right now. At Deering right now, we have about 188 employees. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, we're trying to grow some of our departments, especially in our production area. So one of the hardest positions to fill is the welding and fabricators. Sure. Uh, the welding and fabricators, are, they're working for other people right now. Um, or they're still in school trying to get their certification. So um, being in school and trying to work a schedule don't really match together when, we're, when we want them to get the full schooling experience. Mm -hmm. So um, the welders and fabricators, we probably have eight to ten openings for welders and fabricators. And we have hired some in the past, but sometimes they're just not working out because people can't get to work. People don't want to work, you know, when they're there, they're not working, the productivity is so low. <laughs> they have to be working when they're they there. They have to be working. Right. <laughs> so, it's called work. Yep. The welders, fabricators, really hard for us to fill, uh, but looking for eight to ten welders and fabricators. Okay. Um, we also have um, our assembly in our production. So the natural gas compressors that we build need different types of assembly members. We have electricians, we have mechanical people, we have uh, threaded pipe workers, we have people that are doing disassembly and assembly. And those are really hard to find because you don't really necessarily need one skill for that. Mm -hmm. You just need to have some kind of skill and then be able to apply it to different things. So somebody with the right skill set, the right mindset, who maybe even is very entry level with a very light skill set could come in, do on the job training and learn the job. What's driving the demand for for the growth you're having? During COVID, there was a downturn. Mm -hmm. Oil and gas, we always have, you know, ebbs and flows of different work. And right now, everybody is getting out of COVID. Hopefully, we're yeah. getting out of COVID. And we're getting back to work. Our customers are ordering big machines again. All, we, all the um, machines that we do are custom packages, so each one is always gonna be different. So our engineering department designs it, then our production team builds it, and each one is different. They're getting bigger, they're getting more complicated, they're getting more bells and whistles than they mm -hmm. ever had. And so we need more people to keep up with the tight deadlines that these customers are giving us. The only problem we're dealing with right now is the supply chain. You know, okay. the supply chain is weeks, months, mm -hmm. years behind on some of our major components we need, like Caterpillar engines, um, Waukesha engines, even things like small bolts that right. never got made that everyone uses, and now there's no um, extra to be sending out in the supply chain when needed. Right. What's the major hurdles that you're facing as far as finding workers? Are they just not enough qualified workers? Is the labor pool not big enough? Um, I guess, what, what what is it? I would say the labor pool is not big enough. I was in a webinar a couple weeks ago and they said that the unemployment rate is at 3.4, which right. is very low, which means you're either working, not working, or can't work mm -hmm. and, and don't want to work. So those are the people that we have left to choose from. <laughs> right. So that people that don't want to work, that are maybe on unemployment, they're sending in applications, we're calling them, they're not returning our calls, or they're telling us, I just did this for unemployment. And at least they're honest. Sure, yeah. Because we've had a lot of no-shows for, for our interviews, and it's, it's sad because it's wasting our time. Mm -hmm. You know, we block out that time during the day to have that conversation. We prepare for them. We review their resume, their application. We get it all ready for them. And then they don't show. Right. And that is probably the most disappointing thing ever. Uh -huh. You know, when the receptionist, when it's time and, and you're like, all right, the receptionist hasn't called me yet. So it, does this mean he's not here or right. she's not here? And it's because that they're not there. And well, even like, if they're okay. late, it's not a good sign. If they're right. late, they better have a good story. Yes. That's what I say. Yes. You better have a really good story if you're late for a job interview. Yeah. Um, so th the labor pool is definitely a problem. Sure. And then one of the things that we do is we recruit at the, the local schools, so the vocational schools. 
CCCTC, MCCTC, TCTC, Newcastle School of Trades. Mm -hmm. We're always trying to get students in. And one of the issues is when they're coming out of those programs, they have this idea in mind that they're going to come out and they're going to jump in next to the best welder, the highest paid welder, and they're gonna get make the same money and be able to do the same skills that that person's doing. And that person's been doing it for 20 years and they're just graduating. And so their idea of what it looks like at a job mm -hmm. and starting at the bottom is not what they wanna do. They wanna be at the top, they want the high pay. And so they don't take the chance to learn the skills. They decide, oh, I'm gonna go find somewhere else to work. You know, and, and, they, and they don't wait. They don't right. wait to, they don't have patience to develop those skills, to wait for the money. You know, it'll all come. Right. You just have to work for it. Well, and, and I would think in your industry, you're building machines that you don't want to fail. Right. So <laughs> I would think you would, anyone that you would uh, want to bring in, you'd want to have them maybe, you know, be mentored. You would, you know, maybe you're watching them a little closer. You want to make sure that the quality of work is there because a failure is going to be a major event. Major probably. event. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that makes sense. Um, now, Let's talk a little bit about what you're doing to try and get some employees in. Obviously, um, a lot of people right now, they're doing you know more flexible hours, they're doing remote work. Some of that is not available to you because mm -hmm. you're a manufacturer. Right. You have to be there yes. to do the work. So I guess, what are you guys doing or any what are any changes that you're making to try and attract more employees? Right now, we actually haven't made any changes to how we're attracting employees because we already have such a robust benefits package for our employees. Starting off with our medical program, we have a really generous medical program uh, for employees. It's in an HRA. We also have uh, dental insurance, life insurance, short-term and long-term disability. Um, and the only thing that the employee needs to pay for is the medical. We pay for the dental, the life insurance, the short-term, and the long-term disability. So that alone, you know, is, right. is a huge saving to employees that are coming in maybe from a place where they were paying hundreds of dollars a month. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a, a great paid time off system, 401k. We do company-sponsored events. We give all of our production team 11 sets of uniforms uh, once they're here for 90 days. We have a safe working environment, on-the-job training. There's a lot of things that we offer that we think are, are great that, that a lot of other places in the Valley don't necessarily offer. So we use that to bring in employees. And the medical one is, the, is probably the largest one we use to, to, to reel people in. Mm -hmm. if, you have, if you're a single, if you have a family, our plan is very unique in that it would, it would save people a lot of money you know, being on our plan, um, and and we don't have to give them this ridiculous high wage because they're not we're not taking as much money out in their medical benefits. Right. So, someone like I said who has hundreds of dollars a month in medical benefits, you know, mm -hmm. is way different than what we offer. Yeah. What about employee retention? Are you having any problem with that, or is that pretty good? Yes, employee retention is hard. Okay. Um, obviously, everybody wants more money, inflation, you know, and um, we also, um, people want to work from home, like you said, and everybody wants some remote working. We did it for so long, where right. we all went remote for a long time, but now they're looking for some flexibility, and we haven't settled on anything yet. We're working on how we could make that work in our type of environment. Mm -hmm. But like you said, we're in manufacturing. We have to be there. Right, right. So we're, we're trying to work on something that might benefit our employees that at least can work from home. But the manufacturing, the, the, you know, the production team, there's no way that they can work from home. And, mm -hmm. and, and we have a great shift for production. It's from 6 to 2.30. We don't have evening shifts. We don't have midnight shifts. So there is one shift, 6 to 2.30. And if you're on overtime, it's 6 to 4.30. And a lot of places, you don't have that. You're working the midnight shift. You're working the right. afternoon shift. And we never have that, that change 
in the in the shifts so you always know hey i'm either working from 6 to 2 30 or 6 to 4 30 you still get your whole evening to be home the only problem is can you get up and be there at six right do you talk to other manufacturers what are you hearing from them as far as employment i i definitely talk to some of my friends so you know in HR, I'm from I'm from Youngstown. I went to Youngstown State University. I graduated in HR from Youngstown State University, and all my friends are in HR companies around this area. Right. And so we are always in contact with each other. You know, tossing ideas, asking about employee situations. What's your recruiting like? You know, what's your turnover like? What's this person like? You know, this person applied. I saw they used to work for you. Those are the conversations I'm having with a lot of the different companies around here. We're not, we haven't been talking about um, how to get people in or, mm -hmm. or anything like that because everyone is struggling. Right. So all my HR friends, I don't, I don't take anybody from them either. If they right, apply right. online, you know, I'm like, those people are off limits. Uh -huh. I can't take it from them because then they're struggling too. So um, I would say that a lot of, a lot of the conversation isn't, isn't about the recruiting. It's more about the struggles. And those are other industries too, are those other just industries. related to, okay. No, other not industries. just manufacturing. Health industry, um, the automotive industry, mm -hmm. and in another manufacturing company, as well as an insurance company. So there's a lot of different industries that are just all struggling with the same problems. 717 Credit Union, business services designed to meet your daily needs. Commercial loans, business deposits, merchant and payroll services. 717 Credit Union, it's knowing you were treated right every time.